Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Line of Judah. And this is your host, Dr. Anna McBride Silva. I'm going to begin with prayer and we're going to move forward from there. Father, thank you for dealing with our hearts and our mind prophetically about your call to your people to repent. Help us humble ourselves and love you that you might endow us with your power even the more to understand you and live righteously. Hallelujah, let it be so. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you could hear that prayer. That prayer was about repentance. The prayer was about repentance. I'll say it again. The prayer was about repentance. Deep earnest repentance this series because i'm gonna make this a series is on pride is on haughtiness and there seems to be quite a bit of it running through israel nevertheless nevertheless it's quite a bit of it and as a person who is prophetically geared centered in yah it's time to get rid of that we can't walk around with pride in our heart because that spirit causes failures. That spirit causes destruction. Ain't no way around it. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. It says, pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. That's the NIV, the NLT. Pride goes before destruction. And haughtiness before a fall. Let's go to the ESV. Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Hmm. These all sound pretty much the same. But let's just keep going. Berean study. Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. I mean, you know, usually when you read through these things, it they start to really vary. But I'm giggling because a lot of this is just the absolute same. Let's do the NKJV. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Notice this one says goes. The other one said go with. All right. NASB. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. Mm, so that one doesn't say fall. That one says stumbling. Same. Last one. NASB 1995. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. Mm, what am I getting to? Let's look at the context. Let's look at verse 17, 18, and 19. The highway of the upright leads away mm, from evil. That's the whole teaching when it's in itself, because what really is evil, okay? People need to get a good conceptual understanding of what evil is, because people don't quite have it, not fully. Mm -mm. And I can say that with all honesty with some of the stuff that I see going on. <laughs> people, people can't have it, can't have the full understanding with some of the things that I see going on. And I won't go into detail. I'll just say, search out your heart. Because this is really what this walk is about. It's not just an intellectual walk. It is a walk about your heart. Your tongue, hallelujah, I will say that much, can lead you into a lot of evil. Not watching what you say. Not watching how you say it. Mm. Hallelujah. And that happens more often than not. And the problem is, when it happens, some people are not repentant about it. It's important to always carry yourself in a way where you are repentant, meaning that you can accept that you did something wrong or there's a possibility that you did something wrong. You can't be puffed up and conceited and thinking you know everything, you got everything perfect and you don't have to repent. Well, you already over there in evil. I'll show you an example. I'll come back to this. Let's go to Luke 18 and 12. Let's just hit it real quick. Luke 18 and 12. Mm. I actually started verse 11. The Pharisee and the tax collector. 
Because <laughs> these Pharisee spirits is real. I'm telling you, you got a lot of Pharisees running around in these streets, boy. <laughs> they got everything right. They better than everybody else. They can look down on people. They can talk down on people. They tongue not really directed by y'all. Yeah, if it's hitting you, I'm talking about you. I love you, though. Because <laughs> I'm talking about me, too. Because it's so easy to do that. It's so easy to get into a pharisaical mindset. Some people may say, it ain't. Check out your walk. That's all I can say. That's why Yahushua said we should constantly be in a state of repentance. In verse 11, it says, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed. Notice, Yah, or oh God, I thank you that I am not like the other men, swindlers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Like he just took it to the next level because <laughs> the tax collector was there to pray just like he was. But he, man, this is pride. If you are doing this, I'm showing it to you. You're prideful. And it's ugly. And Yahuwah does not receive it. But I will continue. I fast twice a week and pay tithes of all that I acquire. So this dude, he was like, yo, I got this right. And had it so wrong. He was doing things basically right. You know, Pharisees had some problems with their doctrine. <laughs> they really had some very strong problems with their doctrine. They had some heart issues. You know what I mean? But the biggest point was the pride. The pride will not let you repent and get yourself fully together. Because you're right, though. That's the danger. Notice the tax collector. But the tax collector stood at a distance, unwilling even to lift up his eyes to the Shemayim or to heaven. Instead, he beat his breast and said, Yahuwah, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Hmm. I'm not going to make sin right. That's not what we talking about. Because some people jump over there because they started studying Torah and they be like, ah. You know, they jump, they jump, they jump, man. <laughs> Same thing the Pharisees did, boy. They jump. He's a tax collector. He was in sin. Blah, 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 blah. He already knew he was in sin. He knew he ain't have it worked out. He knew he needed some reproving. Ha! Ah! The mindset of the Pharisee is, I no longer need any type of reproving from Yahuwah. I have this right, and I'm glad that I'm not like the other people, because I have this right. Yeah, no, you don't. There it is. I said it. I keep the feast. I keep Shabbat. I keep my calendar. I'm righteous. No, you're not. <laughs> That's only part of this journey, man. There's so much to it. Mm. Father truly did say it when he says, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And in truth is not outward. That's why it says the lettering of the word, kill it. Some of you may need to see that. Can't remember exactly where it is real quick. Let me look it up. The lettering of the word, man. The lettering of the word. There it is. The letter kill it. There's some little dot dot keepers, man. <laughs> Second Corinthians three and six. <clears throat> Woo. Mm -mm -mm. There it is. Because that's why people couldn't receive Messiah. Because they were letter based believers. They was on the paper. They wasn't working in the spiritual realm. Because truly, we're on the we're on the, the the ending of this. That's why we're in the last days. We're on the ending of this. But for those who were in Torah when Messiah came, it was a big jump to accept him. Because the lettering of the word is not what he came in. He came in the spirit. So don't think spirit and in truth is all about the lettering, because it's not. 
Because I've had people challenge me on that. Oh, but when when we fellowship, we got fellowship in spirit and in truth. And they just be talking about letters on the page. They ain't even looking into the pride issues. They ain't even looking into the haughtiness. They're not looking into any of that. They're not looking into the hard work. Yeah, it's a problem. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six. Let's let's look at it. It says, who also has made us able ministers of the Brit Hadashah or the renewed covenant, renewed. That means Father put this thing in our heart. <laughs> he got it off the page. Come on, baby. He got it off the tablets. Woo, he put it in our heart. Not of the letter, mm. but of the spirit for the letter killeth. Come on. Woo, get the revelation that the letter going to kill you. If you're running around in the lettering of the word, it's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. I said it and I won't take it back because the scripture is plain right here. Not of the letter, but of the Ruach. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Mm. Let's read the in or the new King James Version, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Let's go for it. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Mm, this one's like that proverb one, not a lot of deviation. Berean study by the Bible. And he has qualified us as ministers of a new covenant or renewed covenant not of the letter but of the spirit but a letter kills but the spirit gives life mm. so many translations here i would suggest people study through all of them get your heart clean now i'm not someone who's following saying don't honor the laws don't honor the covenant we should be honoring the covenant but it's deep when you really start honoring the covenant by the Ruach, not by the letter, you start learning a lot of things about yourself. <laughs> Which is what Father is pointing to. Mm, 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 mm. The Pharisee wasn't really honoring this by the Ruach. He couldn't have been standing in front of the Father like this, puffed up. I'm glad I'm not like them. Really? You still got works to do, brother. There's no needs for you to come to Father Abba like that. Puffed up and proud. Don't you know Father can't even stand it? Let me show you another scripture in Isaiah chapter three. Because there, there are people, what I'm really pointing to also, is that there are people in leadership like that. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's like, it's really serious. Because then you begin to lead people in haughtiness so not only does it happen to the leader it is passed down spiritually hallelujah over the entire congregation and you got a bunch of haughty people because their lead is haughty mm. it's deep it's deep do the hard work don't leave nothing out. Focus on your heart. Not being like the Pharisee pointing to nobody else. And I'm only bringing it out because this is what Abba has laid on my heart to do. Because there is a lot of haughtiness. This is dealing with leaders. Isaiah chapter 3. It's dealing with leaders and so much more. We're going we're gonna to run through it. For behold... Yahuwah, Elohim, do if take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator, and I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another and everyone by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. If you don't see children acting proud in these streets, let me tell you. Because this prophecy has already been fulfilled. It had multiple fulfillments. 
And I'm not trying to take us as a nation backwards. I'm just saying that this still stands. This scripture is still relevant. Because all of this is still talking about haughtiness. When a man shall take hold of his brother and of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast closely, be thou our ruler and let us ruin by under or ruin and let this ruin, excuse me, be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue. Mm, woo! That's why James, come on. Everything in the Brit Hadasha work right off that covenant. That's why it says in the Brit Hadasha, the renewed covenant, it talks about the power of the tongue. Hmm. For their tongues and their doings are against Yah to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doeth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. So this is Yahuwah through the prophet warning them that their tongue and their doings against Yah Mm, it's costing them. Our nation is coming back together, but let me tell you, judgment still starts in the house. And then people of Yasharel, the people of Israel, got to get right with their tongue and with their doings. Yahuwah Sabao stand it up to plead and stand it up to judge the people. Yahuwah will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, and or eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. So Father has some concerns about how the poor were being treated. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor? Mm. Say if Yahuwah of of hosts. Mm. Now we go to the women being denounced. And I only want to go over this, right? Because there are some people who teach, and I got to get in it because it's all error. I'm just addressing error on so many levels. That adorning yourself and looking beautiful is a sin. And they are haughty people as well because they think, because I have all this modesty outwardly, I'm better than a woman who may fix herself up. Sin is still a haughtiness issue. And I know in the renewed covenant of the Brit Hadashah, it talks about shamefacedness and modesty, which the Lord adores. Nothing wrong with it either way. But there doesn't need to be a haughtiness of, oh, I don't wear jewelry. I don't fix myself up like that because that's not modesty. It's the modesty of the spirit. If we really get into it, Father is talking about the adornment of the inward man, if you read through that. So there's no need to be haughty. And I'm pointing to it because part of the judgment of Judah was indeed that he took away some of their information. Excuse me. I'm recording. Sorry, I'm not even going to take this down. It is what it is. Some people are talking behind me, my family. I'm almost done. Um, We want to move into, and I said took away some of their information. He took away Judah's, the women. He took away their outward adorning because of their hardiness. Moreover, the most high say it. Because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, Yahuwah will smite with the scab, the crown of the head of the daughters, and Yahuwah will discover their secret parts. That means he caused some of their hair to fall out. <laughs> In that day, Yahuwah will take away the bravery of their tinkling 
ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels. So that was what the, this adornment wasn't wrong. Yahuwah took it away because of the haughtiness of their attitude. Let's keep going down. The changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of a well-set hair, baldness. <laughs> and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. So I'm pointing to this because... The haughtiness that is in the congregations of Yah has got to go. If you're a woman of great modesty, beautiful. Don't carry yourself in haughtiness that because another woman wants to put her nose jewels in, her rings, she wants to wear her bonnet, she wants to wear her chains. As she's in a modest attitude, you shouldn't look down on her and say, was well, she sinning? This was actually a part of the judgment that father took some of these things away. There's nothing wrong with a woman fixing herself up. It just comes to be sin if it's overdone. And if they put the emphasis on their outward appearance more than their inward. But we shouldn't be teaching these things on the outside of balance. And so I wanted to point to that as well. Hallelujah. Because all of it comes to be pride. It's like, I need a little something to put myself up above other people. So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to talk about people who don't do it like me. And beat my chest and say I'm thankful that I'm not like the unrighteous. Mm -mm. Woo! That's pride. So I hope you enjoyed this study. I'm ending it in this point. I will continue the series. Much ahava. Shalom. And thank you for listening. Father, thank you for blessing the hearers and the listeners today. Let your will and your divine audience be done in the lives of your people forever. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen.